away. Still going bad on him anyway. Saw you last night, but did it bad. Hey. Oh yeah, that's what I put in that suit. Look, oh, no, 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 you didn't wash nothing out. Okay. Going live from the college radio. <laughs> Marshall, Texas. I went to Wiley College. Yeah, ironically. For mass communication, I was supposed to be doing this DJ, uh, this jockey, and TV jockey. Uh, for mass communication, any kind of, any form of communications, it was going to cover being in front of the camera. So. That was 2006. <laughs> yeah. A ludicrous got on. He oh. uh, started off as like a disc jockey. Love a lover man. Chris Love a lover man. Yeah. I think he ran up on somebody. Somebody signed him. I forgot who he ran up on actually. But he ran up on somebody and uh and got a uh, got noticed. Spit for him and rap, I think it was Jermaine Dupri. I'm quoting, but it was somebody. And he said he had been planning that. He, he he went to school for this just so he could show somebody his music. Alright. Uh, Easy to run. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what happened. Hey, this is my mother. Sorry, that's She remembered me. Oh my god, my movie star lady! I'm so glad. Yeah, okay. Can I radio it? Where'd you get your hair done? Right now. Oh, it looks so fresh. <laughs> oh my God. Tell them how it looks. Very okay. true. <laughs> Sorry. It's like an urban suite. All right. I don't know. What's up? You all right? Yes, sir. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. How are you? All right. It's what? I want to grab a two shot, three shot. Wow. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I've been on a park. I mean, uh, um, I, have a, I had an interview, but it wasn't a professional setting. No shade to those guys. Yeah, no, no, no. This is, this is different. Yeah. We we have a podcast room. We've done podcasts. Okay. We were at uh, two different internet radio stations, okay. and it's different when you're in a yeah. real professional studio. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole it make you thing. Feel professional, like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It kind of transfers that energy, like. Yeah. Absolutely, and you deserve this. You've earned this, and and this won't be your first time. For sure. Oh, sure. okay, because we're going to have you up here won't more often. Yeah. And uh, it won't be your last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I can't wait to have you and Troll up here together. Because yeah. one of the things I want to want to do is I either want to do a Zoom call with the artists and their children who For are sure. artists also. Sure. Or try to have everybody in and have a round table and That's talk right. with... Yeah. You know, the, the parents and the kids, and it's sure, like, sure. who inspired you, <laughs> right. and who are your inspiration, you know, and like, sure. how, when did you each catch the bug? For sure. Oh, you asking me that now? 
No, no, but I want to have that conversation. I want to do that. I was going to try to touch on a little bit of that if Charles yeah. was able to make it in tonight, but we will do that on a, on a future, okay. on a future episode. That's Just thinking. We should uh, kind of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Introduce to our kids how we should have done it. Collab it. Like yes. put all the kids together, put all our sons together and help them create, like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Cause it is, it is, it is kind of like their time but people like me and Avar and the others that are my age, we we still in love with it. You know what I mean? I think we still do it good. So it's like, um, ain't no need to like stop. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> as long as we're able to do it, like, no let's do limit. it. Yeah. There's no age limit. If Pop was alive, if he if, if he if he stopped rapping. Uh, yeah, that'd be a problem. <laughs> that would be a problem. Yeah, the world would be quite upset. There is no age limit on anything. And um, the only people who put age limits on stuff is Hollywood. Yeah, you know? for sure. And that's for their own reasons. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They have sure. one interest, generating revenue. I yeah. get it. It's okay. Yeah. But and their target audience is the kids. This, what we all do is about the love for sure. of the music. Yeah. It's not about the money. It's never been about the money. And, like, you could still go on and make music for the next 20 years and not give two shits about sure. the money because you're doing it for the love. For sure, for sure. I try to leave it alone. It's like, it just And you can't, me. right? You can't. <laughs> like, some of the guys, they'll, like, leave it alone for a couple of couple few years yeah. because they're doing their life. Yeah, they're life having a happening. child. Yeah. You know, life is happening. For sure. But usually when the kids hit, like, three, four years old, boom, yeah. they're back in the yeah. studio. That's what my daughter is. She's pretty <laughs> Sure. Yeah, so for this sure. is good. It's the right timing. And you have you have more things to present to the world now. You for have sure. more stories to tell. Sure. And from a newer, unique perspective. Yeah, different mindset, for sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. But I, I want to tell y'all, I like what y'all been doing. Ever since uh, Renee Smith, or uh, Goldie, uh, introduced me to y'all, I was like, I was excited because he was, he was hyped. He was like, man, she's the one that's doing, she's moving and shaking. Like, she gets all the people together. I'm like... Okay, let me get that because that's why it, it gave me the New York, LA type vibe to where music is appreciated more than it is down here. And it's sad that it's not as appreciated down here. But uh, we're working on it. Right? It is. Uh, you just have to find the, the right spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I often, you know, there's two sides of hip hop here there's the rap side and mm -hmm. there's the backpack style hip hop side. For sure. They haven't really meshed together. They've mm. dabbled with one another, and it's good. Yeah. And I've done shows where I've put the rap and the hip-hop and rock together on the same stage. Mm. And it's done really, really well. But still, even after 20 years, they're still not, they're still not really fucking with each other. And it's not for nothing, but, you know, on the hip-hop side, they got all their business together. They're mm. going on tours. They have merch. For sure, for sure. They go to other cities and they bring boxes of merch with them and they sell that. Like, they've got their business down. Sure. And I keep trying to bring that over to our side right, right. because our people need to know about that for sure. and need to get on that more. And sure. so when any artist hits me up and says, oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there, what's your merch looking like? For sure. You know, oh, well, you know, maybe I don't have any. And if they <laughs> don't have any, I go, okay, here's what you want to do. You, you see all those ads, stickermule.com and everything rolling down mm -hmm. Instagram. <laughs> go buy you some stickers because they're cheap and they're good. I've done it. They're great. Mm. You go to vistaprint.com. Sign mm -hmm. up for their email list. They're going to send you a 40% off one item like every two weeks. Mm. Stock up. You know, I get I get uh, an email once a month that says buy a T-shirt for fourteen dollars mm. up to a two X. So I'll buy a T-shirt for fourteen dollars and it's free shipping, and they'll send it to me. Why not? For sure. And I can sure. you know put that in, and then I have a shirt to give away and stuff, and I have stickers to give away, yeah. and it gets them to start thinking like, oh, it's really that easy. Oh, yeah. God, just, Go over here for twenty dollars, get a hundred stickers. Boom! You now have a hundred stickers to give away. Mm. Make sure your social media is on it. Make sure your name and your face Over. is on it. Yeah. You know, I'm make gonna try flyers. That. I'm gonna do that because that's, that's a challenge. 
Do do it. Yeah. Have Maz look. Have Mazella make you Mazella. Mazella. DJ Baby Blue Diamond. Mazella okay. House. I have seen them. Okay. She does good cartoon characters mm. of people, and I think it's like twenty five bucks or so. Okay. Have her make you a cartoon character face. Pop that on a sticker. If you don't have somebody to do graphics, hit me up. I'll help you. Okay. And get you a sticker. Get you a sticker. Pop Look it around it. town here and there. Like all the clubs have a sticker <laughs> wall. Pop it, pop it on the sticker. And then the next time you come up to KSYM, we've got this glorious trash can back there. It's about this high. Okay. Well, about this high. And, and on every side of it, it's just covered okay. in everybody. Covered. That thing's been working for years. Okay. It needs a wallow sticker on there. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> got the best yeah. I'm definitely going to do it. <laughs> And maybe we should take a meeting and have a brainstorm session and make you a playlist of like other stuff that you need to do. We can look at where you're at right now, where you want to be and how to get there. For sure. For sure. And I need that. Because like on the business on the business end of it, um, I delve into it, but life be happening so much that I really don't and I'm not gonna yeah. use that as an excuse, but No, but life I'm is life and man. Yeah, yeah. But I'm taking more time to learn it. Like when I was when I was incarcerated, I had uh, read the uh, How to Make It in the Music Business. It was the 2000 edition, I believe. And um, this guy Dread was putting me on it. And um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I know Dread. Yeah, Dread put me on. <laughs> it. I was the president of one of his labels for a few years. Okay. Yeah. Dread serious with that thing. He know. He know that thing. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but he gave me some books, and that was one of the books. I think Donald Passman wrote it. That's, you know, that's how he started Reservoir yeah. Music, yeah. you know, that's how he got Cadillac Music on the Billboard mm. charts multiple I like, times, I like Cadillac, multiple times, I'm messing with Cadillac. and yeah, I love the boys, I've yeah. known little Scott, like, in, like forever, they hard, like, oh my god, they, they embody, they killing all of us, to be honest, like, awesome, because it's just them, Dude, yeah, it's they're it's they're, not they're making the bigger money. Yeah, they should be. People are working with them because they've got the billboards. And um, I don't know if they've been Grammy nominated yet, but they may have it's had a Grammy nomination. <laughs> it's coming if they have it. Yeah, it should because Ertis is on the, Dredd is on the, okay. on the Grammy. He's a voting member. Okay. Um, I haven't seen seen him in a little while though. I need to I need to touch base with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breakfast Club, Bob. Well, y'all will be the breakfast the equivalent to the Breakfast Club now. It's a shame that y'all don't get more support as a like from the city. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. That's kind of all I struggle as creatives and bringing the hip hop scene in whatever fashion we bring it to San Antonio. Yeah, it's like they're more concerned with not getting on air at the beat rather than getting on the air with us. Yeah. We're the same thing. We're both on FM. We're, we're, we're business-wise, we're the same. Yeah, yeah. Except they're corporate, we're college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Corporate has their own rules, we have ours. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I just, I don't think 98.5 supports local. Period. So, like, we should support who support us. Like, no shade to 98.5. They I, want to. I will say this okay. in their defense because I've spoken with all of them and Cindy Hill and everybody. They want to. The DJs okay. want to. Ham does what he can with what they allow. Okay. Um, Univision is corporate. Okay. And corporate is about generating revenue, and that that's exactly what they're doing. Right. And and. That's okay. That's good for them. Yeah. That's good for them. Should they be supporting the artists more? Yeah, because it seems like they support the Tana a little bit more. Yeah. But then it's Univision. So, of course, yeah. you know, we have KROV, mm -hmm. our black radio station. Yeah. They support the black community first. And we like this, you know. Um, but and then college radio, we get to support who we like. Yeah, yeah. and he the gets kids to are more loving every here. Like, song. The kids are going to support. They're not biased. Yeah, no. I've seen. I, well, I've I've I perform at colleges and high schools, and regular 
uh, street club, whatever you call it. Uh, the college and high school kids were just there to have a good time. Yeah. Like, and they just, they, they engage. You tell them, uh, put their hands up, they're gonna put their hands up with like, it's it's just flowing, like it flows. And you can feel the energy that's like, it's not no bias and trying to judge, you're just there to have right. a good time. Yeah. So, because I don't wanna waste nobody's time. So I do a lot of my own stuff. Everything I do is kind of like my own stuff, but I do need to link with people that are moving and that are into networking. Okay. Network with Legacy. Okay. Don't bother with anybody else. Okay. Legacy has his studios. He has two radio stations. Mm. He's working on a massive project right now which is one giant place with everything in it mm. and it's amazing but he is amazing his business is incredible oh i'm saying it. it looks professional if he, <laughs> if he handles your music you're going to get spins you're going to make money you are going to be successful you are not okay. not going to be all every single one of his artists have done like millions wow. of streams each one has at least one if not more RIAA certified mm. plaques mm. with the checks to go with them mm, that's okay with the You're checks to go heavy. with them so it's not some bullshit yeah. I've seen some people throw shade and they say oh all their all their plaques, I can buy them too. No, you can't. No, no you can't. No. Because each stream that that plaque, count, plaque counts for is a certified yeah, you stream. Can't get them certified. Yeah. So you get, you tell, you reach out to him and you tell him Cheryl said. Okay. Okay. And l allow him to get your business good. And the great radio stations, um, you know, one's, one's hip hop and, and whatever else, and one's rock, I believe. Wow. <laughs> now when he knows by a certain day to get X amount of sales, and then that will count towards, mm. you know, X, Y, Z, and then that moves, moves him up and his music, and just. That's what's gonna separate an artist from in San Antonio. Cause I think a lot of us, I, I got caught up with that when I first got out and started dropping music, just expecting it to get, and do what it's supposed to do and expect that everybody to support and push it. But if you're not marketing it and if you're not yeah. pushing the song, like some of these songs take a year to break. Yeah. More, and we just drop it and be like, ah, they didn't mess with it. And we look at a month's worth of, uh, you know, uh, data. And, ah, they mess with when you haven't done that. And Facebook not going to let you do what you want to do no more. No. Like, we used to get 2,000 views oh quickly. Man, it's like 44 views. You're like, they not showing it to nobody. The AI no, yeah. over there has really shut so much yeah. down. Yeah. It's it's horrible for the artists. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, just the emails yeah. DMing everybody. Like, you have to really go to the nth degree now yeah. to get your spins, to no. let everybody know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because social media so many is not people being so The line's so long, so you got to repeat it. Repetitive, like you got to be consistent with doing it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's why I learn how to um, on like on Instagram. Serious, like it's not just the regular feature. Like right? I'm not trying to charge nobody. None of that. I just want to work with people that's serious. Though, like. And there's a lot of artists here, like Avar, who will sure. who will work like that. For sure. Because y'all are grown, and it's and it's yeah. about it's about doing the song, getting it out there. You know he's gonna put it out there the right way. For sure. And so, yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. He got a lot of stuff going. I like I like full of characters he be having going. <laughs> oh my god. And shout out to Avon for jumping in that video for us, like on some last <laughs> minute stuff. So Yeah. He always gonna like he pick up the phone every time I call him if I ask him, like he's gonna do his best to make it happen if it's possible. Mm -hmm. I would say that. So I, I can out I don't I don't try to judge people like what they say, it's just how you move. He always moved like legitimately. Yep, he yeah. moves proper. That's what I love. Back in the, back when we were doing SA Urban like 15 plus years ago, um, 
I was one of the staff writers, and then I worked up to becoming editor in chief. Mm. And whenever I would get a call, we have an opportunity to interview Chris Brown. Avar, mm. you want to go? We have an opportunity to interview Paul Wall, even yeah. though it's three. In, you know, it's going to be at three in the morning. But you know, yeah. will you drive out to Houston right now mm. so you can interview Paul Wall tonight? Absolutely, Cheryl. I'm there, mm. and he was always there. He interviewed Hurricane Chris wow. at the last minute, also, wow. and he went out there and he could, he works. Yeah, he sure. works. His work ethic has always been that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I would send him on all the big interviews. For sure. Because <laughs> he would go. He would do it. There was for never sure, a question. Sure. No, for sure. I've been seeing him work since I've been out. And he's working. <laughs> he's working, for sure. That's my. I'm used to it. I can shut it off and on in between. <laughs> in I between should, breaks and whatnot. I should be able to be good. <laughs> I'm gonna go live also. I haven't done that yet. Let me do that. Yes, she is. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good. Because that's the, the round knob is the volume. Okay. Here. For sure, for sure. For sure. JP, how are you, sir? I hope you've hey. been well. Zelina Flores, hi. Princess. Okay. A wonderful show tonight. Um, our guest tonight is Wallow the One. He's a San Antonio based artist. He's fantastic. So many stories to tell. Um, he's got some new music dropping real soon. And he's got a song with Avar that's going to be dropping. Shh, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell that. We're just working on making sure the, the song done. Uh, it's, it's pretty old, but it's still dope. That's good. Hey, it's still, it's still dope. It's old to us, but music is good. timeless. For sure. Music <laughs> is timeless. It doesn't. The age of the artist doesn't matter, and the age of the music doesn't matter. Because I, I had a conversation earlier today with, uh, with, with my oldest child about the mamas and the papas. Mm -hmm. She saw something about the mamas and the papas, and so we got engaged into a whole conversation about that, mm -hmm. and about you know you know about the history of the band and mama Cass and everything and she was just floored so now she's got to go look up the mamas and the papas which yeah. is going to lead her to jefferson airplane and fleetwood mac before stevie nicks <laughs> and all this uh, you know Down the uh, yeah it's going to be fantastic and i yeah. can't wait yeah yeah now my daughter be asking me about tupac and i'd be like what i thought i was on um... oh no she's probably asking about that since uh <laughs> <laughs> Pooh Diddy's three oh, houses got raided today, oh, yeah. and not even by the not even by the police. It, they weren't raided by the police. The no. feds, Homeland Security. Yeah, Homeland Security. Dude, <laughs> that, Homeland Security. That's terrorist, that's terrorist status, right there. Yes, Jeez. and in three different states: New York, Miami, and Los Angeles. Oh, so you did? That's what you were telling uh -huh. me. Like, yeah. I didn't believe, but she was telling me that. I'm so like, that's why that's probably wow. all coming up because it's all over TikTok, it's all mm. over Instagram. I saw it first on TikTok, and I was so like, "Did he go to jail? Maybe this is fake." Yeah, he, he's in jail now. Oh wow! Yeah, he got it. He That's got it. Yeah, man. crazy because one of the houses was his daughter's house, but it's in Bad Boy's name. That's why they went there. Wow! Um, crazy. Um, San Antonio College Radio. Welcome to another edition of the Urban Suite. I'm your host D Major here to bring you the best of underground hip hop, R and B, and surprises galore. Joined as always by my partner in crime, Cheryl Metal. Hey, hey, San Antonio. Hope everyone had a great weekend. It is the last Monday of. March, uh, Easter is right around the corner. Yeah. So, uh, three day weekend for a lot of people coming up. So, Ooh. so yes, indeed. <laughs> that would be fun. We'll have to plan a barbecue or something. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. That sounds great. Cheerio. Hey, <laughs> hey y'all, stay tuned. We got a jam packed show for you tonight. Plus, we have special guests in studio tonight, uh, dude, uh, Wallow the One. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Hey y'all, stay tuned. We've got a great conversation with Wallow coming up. Yes, sir. Um, in this block of music, we have a track from Triz and Mike Summers, who are preparing a brand new album that should be dropping this summer. So get ready for that. What? But first, we must pay 
our condolences to uh, a great MC, the first lady, and I do mean first lady, of Death Jam. Mm. Yes. Our friend Boss. R.I.P. Boss. Mm. One and only album. I, I tell you what. Um, Ring the, the alarm, Boss? Boss, yeah, Deeper. Boss. Oh, she just, Deeper. Yeah. And de oh, yeah. wow, yeah, yeah. Condolences. Just passed. Uh, the one and only album she put out was uh, instead of president. <laughs> instead of president. Um, hey, nah, she was hard. Yeah, she was definitely hard. Um, great album. Um, like there's only like one or two songs you can even play on the air from that album. Just how hard she went. <laughs> yeah. But let's go ahead and get into the track that really laid the foundation for her uh, from the album Born Gangsters. This is. Boss with Deeper. Do not go anywhere, y'all. More coming up. This is the Urban Suite KSYM, San Antonio College Radio. And Beverly Chica, thank you for jumping into the IG Live. We got <laughs> San Antonio's Wallow the Wound right here with us. So she was whole, and I don't know why she didn't go like. Big. Right? She was hard. Hard. Especially uh, the time she came out with it. Was like, yeah, I still remember when they uh, banned her from MTV because she kept cussing on uh, the MTV <laughs> rap. She was gangster <laughs> to the core. Money, my mortars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't lie. Yeah, he don't lie. All right. Here on one of the Diddy videos, he said his LA home has been rated <laughs> by a by a homeless security. <laughs> Oh, oh man! Goodness. I know it's all typos. That shit's oh. funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, that's deep with homeland. Girl. Yeah. Uh. yeah, they gonna know every way you when you pissed every time you pissed. Not that. Uh, that's some uh, high clearance. What they call it? Yeah, that's some high clearance stuff right there. The cost of living comfortably in San Antonio has jumped forty three percent from last year. Sheesh. That's crazy. Isn't that nuts? We feel it. That's all about true, though. It. <laughs> that's, all about, that's all about true. I'm talking about the gas prices alone is going crazy. But, jeez. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> KSYM, San Antonio College Radio. This is the Urban Suite, D Major, Cheryl Metal. As stated before, uh, joining us for our open mic session this evening, we have the one and only Wallow the One. How are you this evening? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Well, excited to be here. Glad you're here. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Man, um, just chopping it up off, uh, off air. Just, uh, well, just glad to have you here, man. No. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, glad um, to be here. So, um, from what I understand, this is not your like original home in San Antonio, or or yeah, yeah, this this is my home. Oh yeah, yes sir. My mom of them is from um, Latonia, Weldon. Not too far from there. Victoria, <laughs> Victoria, and uh, oh, Weldon, Weldon, Texas. Yes sir. But okay. I grew. I'm born and raised there. Though. Word. Yes sir. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still travel back and forth to Victoria quite a bit? Uh, we go down there to uh, see my grandma because all our uh, family members get buried down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Um, what's happened to a uh, nice family plot or something in the area? It's uh, my great, my great, great grandfather left uh, left my grandma a lot of land. And mm -hmm. on that land, they got a um, museum, for our fa like a family history museum. And then it's a grave. Gravesite, and then it's like a big chunk of land that 
they don't even mess with right now. Like, I don't even. Oh, um, yeah. the way things are going, um, to have a, a substantial amount of land, especially yeah. black owned, yeah, in <laughs> anywhere in the country, but especially yeah. around here in Texas, that's that's something you hold on to for sure. That, For that's, sure. that's, that's passing on some some definite legacy. And For to sure. have your right family there. all together For sure. is mm -hmm. amazing. Something a lot of people don't get. True. I mean, well, they're not all the way together, but my great great grandfather was smart enough to not. He where he wrote it up the, the will or the deed or whatever. They all have to come together to do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, good. I guess good. that would be impossible. Stipulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's gonna stick around. But yeah. Oh, that's good though. That's good though. For sure. Yeah. Sorry. How was it growing up around here? No. Um. Um. Coming up. It was kind of like the uh, the normal project. I grew up in the projects in the Woody Court, so. That word. It was kind of like the uh, the normal stuff you see on the Minister Societies, uh, the New Jack Cities. It's a a bunch of chaos. Uh, some innocent kids mixed in the in the in the, in the picture. Mm -hmm. Uh bunch of drug selling witnessing that as a kid uh bunch of trauma like you know what i mean just seeing people uh murdered like you know what yeah. i mean and hearing about it and just being in that atmosphere where you hear gunshots every night like the, the, the average the average story really to be honest with you yeah yeah to even call it an average story I mean, you know what? <laughs> You're right, because this is not average. But we, 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 we. I guess we adapt to it, and we think this is. I mean, the normal life. So yeah, yeah. You're right. Thanks mm -hmm. for the correction. Uh, but the normal young black kid that's coming out of the project story, mm -hmm. like, it's not all of them, because some of them, you know, they they focus on sports and find a way out. Yeah. But uh, I got caught up in all of the hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So when when did the uh, focus change uh, getting into music and into hip hop? Mm, man, music got me at seven, seven, seven. years old. Wow. Yeah, I wrote my first song called uh, "Bad Habits Can't Be Broken" um, at seven, and it was all influenced by my cousin Marlis. Uh, he uh, he was he's like six years older than me, so he was like thirteen. So mm -hmm. he was able to listen to the DJ Quicks, uh, Cypress Hill, Ice Cube's the the. Uh, What's that one song I like? Uh, Spice Ones. Okay. Nice. And all that. So he introduced me to all that. And I was like, first when he put me on the New York stuff, I was like, this is cool. Mm -hmm. It was something new. But when he put me on the West Coast stuff, I was like, whoa. It kind of, because that's what I was seeing. Yeah. Like, I wasn't seeing the stuff that uh, the New York cats is rapping about. Like, mm -hmm. But they was hard. They still hard. But that just ain't what I was seeing. You yeah. know what I mean? I was seeing what the West Coast was rapping about. Okay. And I'm uh, the the bigger. I mean, the older guys was living like exactly what they were saying. So I was like, "Sheesh!" They was able to put this on beats. But yeah, I wrote my first song at seven. To answer your question. Yeah. Wow. Yes, wow. sir. Seven. Um. And it just grew from there. Yeah, but I I, I really didn't take it serious at seven. It probably took to about. I still ain't take it serious, but. I started messing with some guys that were able to get me in the studio. Okay. See, when I first heard the song, I mean, when I first wrote my song, I didn't know you had to get in front of a mic and record it and do all that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but as I got older, I, I think about age 15, 14, 15, is when I first got in the studio with a, a guy named uh, Sweet Pea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet Pea's a, yeah, legend That's right a legend. Here, yeah. He was like he was like the master P to me at that time, like because he was the only guy that I knew could get me in the studio. And he had he had a couple songs, he had album covers, and he was I was like sheesh, like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And he was my age. I was like damn. So I linked up with him, and we did a couple of uh, uh, we did Deep in the Game One and Deep in the Game Two. I featured on them. Them was his them his projects. Them was mm -hmm. his projects. But uh, I featured on both of them, and then. Um, uh, got a little older. We started messing with Hustle Time, okay, uh, with Dice and um, Lottie and Grip and Scrappy, and we actually had a song that could have went somewhere. It was uh, called Million Dollar Lick. I don't know if y'all ever heard Million Dollar Lick, but okay. possibly I was on possibly. that. Yeah, it was a, that whole album was really hard, especially for its time. But um, yeah, I went went to that. Went, I mean, went to messing with them. Um, started messing with Kino, uh, my my ex wife's. Um, brother, mm -hmm. we was we was doing the shine on thing. Um, Dad was supposed to go somewhere, but me and him started not seeing eye to eye on some things, and uh, 
it kind of like just split us split us apart. But uh, yeah, I think if um, he was still alive, he would have. He would have definitely blew. Like he had a hustle that was crazy, but, uh, yeah. unmatched. But, yeah. So when when did you uh, finally started focusing on on you and your your projects? Um, after I got out of prison. Well, while I was in prison, I just started. I was just I kept writing, mm -hmm. and uh, my my biggest thing in my head was, um, damn, I'm gonna be too old when I get out. You know what I mean? And I got out and started feeling around, and a lot of that changed. So. I, I was still behind. Like, I'm still probably a little bit behind on, on most people. Uh, but just trying to catch up. But uh, I started taking myself, I mean, start thinking about just doing it myself uh -huh. um, when I got locked up. About two years into my bed, I just started writing. And uh, a lot of stuff y'all hearing now is like 15 years old type stuff. Like, I wrote like probably 400 songs while I was locked up. 400 songs? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So if you wanted to record, you could just record. Oh yeah, wow. for sure. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm all the way ready. Yeah. Talk about having enough stuff sitting in the vault. Yeah, I got like 200 songs like right now recorded that uh I need to touch up and stuff, just work on. But yeah. yeah. So you you found a, a a particular producer that's working with you or? Um, my cousin Marlis, but he be playing with the beats. He be playing <laughs> with the beats. Uh, so I go on YouTube and get beats or. Uh, I bought beats from Ab Abstract. Um, oh, great shout out to Abstract. Abstract. Yeah, he he getting back on it now, so I'm gonna link back up with him. That's what's up. Yeah, um, he's staying busy. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he probably one of the dopest producers, engineers, oh, slash absolutely. artists, slash beat makers that I know. Like he be zoning, like you be in the studio with him. He just, I be trying to talk to him. I'm like, Let me just shut up. He, <laughs> when he finishes, I'm like, that's what I had in my head. Like, he's awesome, and he's a great person. For sure, yeah, for a sure. Really good guy. For sure, he is. About his business too. For sure. For sure. Yes. Man. For sure. Um, tell you what, let's uh go ahead and get into a little music, and we'll come back to chop okay. it up with some more. Okay. Y'all stay tuned. We got more coming up in this block of music. We have. Uh, a track from Avar the Star plus the latest from Legacy City. But right now, Wallowed One, this is Voice of the Youth. Man, I forgot about this song. <laughs> hey, it, still, it still stands. Man, Especially what's going on right now. Y'all stay tuned. More coming up. Mr. Urban Sweet, KSYM, San Antonio it. College Radio. <laughs> Fam, how are you? The, first, the official murder the baby. How are you? Girl, Who's how that? are you? The official murder baby. <laughs> I believe that's J. Is it? Aren't you J5's girl? Isn't that J5's girl? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Man, She'll I tell me in a second. It is. <laughs> I believe it is. Ooh, I want to tell you something. Huh? I want to tell you something since you brought up his name. Yes. I'm sorry, and I know you're listening to yourself. No, no, you did. You're sitting in the same chair that Spice One sat in. Wow. Yes. Wow. Just. Hey, now I'm a Just spice to let one. You know. I'm a spice one fanatic too. Like <laughs> that man, now, the jealous got me strapped. I was like, wow, like, yeah. He was, he was, he was one of the first ones that got me on the West Coast, the West Coast, uh, the West Coast wave. And I was just like, man, this is crazy. When we have a back end, we'll make sure you're in the room also. Mmm, that'll be crazy. I'm a fan of. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. He loves that. He loves yeah, that. He, he deserved it, man. He deserved his flowers for sure. Like, <laughs> nah, he was something serious. That's why I was running around. He was definitely something serious. Like, man. Him, MCA, DJ oh, Quick. MCA. Like, man. Oh, God. Man, oh, them albums was yeah, crazy. Man. And they had the skits and all that going on. It was crazy. Yeah. I forgot about this song. <laughs> but it still stands. I want to swear everything's still going on. This the song still stands. So. For sure, man. I appreciate it. For sure. I'm doing good, lady. I'm still waiting for your music. What's that? Remember when we heard, um, hey, Amzai, what's up? What's happening, fam? What's good, Amzai? Remember when we heard them do their music together, J5 and his oh, girlfriend? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, we still waiting on that music. We haven't forgotten. That shit was dope, and mm. I still want it, girl. Sure. So get on him about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> like, I want, like, I will walk around. I have hit 
artists with my chancla. <laughs> <laughs> because if I ask them to send send the music in or you know get me a radio edit, send the music in, and it takes you six months, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking smacking you when I see you because I shouldn't have to beg. I shouldn't have to be up your butt about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's but what I'm learning that. now, though. That I need to make a radio edit when I record the song. That way I ain't doing back, going back over. Yes. Mm -hmm. It yes. should be spit yes. out the same yes. time. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, God willing, you get with the legacy. That will just all be done. For sure. That's all automatic. I'm definitely going to tap in. That's the kind in. of producer he is. I'm definitely going to tap in. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Man. He, he, he touched everything else. Dude, right? Yeah. Like, he covered it. He really covered it. Like, this yeah. is such a good homage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recipes, Corey. Yeah, Corey, you talking about Corey. Yeah, you know, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, not everybody has. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. I guess who lives on Ferris? You should tell Ferris. Okay. Okay. Have their own record pools. Like you can go like Green Hits out by Houston. Um, get your music with them, and uh, they have they have a record pool. And it's like five dollars a month for you to send their music and go into their record pool. Mm. So all their DJs can pull from that. Oh, that ain't Fleet bad. DJs got that. Like all the different DJ coalitions have that, okay. and that's another way to get your music out there to other cities. Okay, okay. It's through them. So if you use one more than one of the DJ clicks, do they kind of get... No. no. No, 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 no. The more, the merrier. Okay. The the more of their DJs that spin your music, it just elevates them as well. Okay. You know, um, okay. so that that's good. And a lot of artists don't... It's not spoken about a lot because record pools still exist. Record pools existed when I, you know... Started in 1979, okay. they were already in existence and they still there. Okay. Okay. I think we forget about the DJs now because we got the social media thing and we think that's the <laughs> that's where it stopped at. But the people that's on the streets is in front of the DJs. Yeah. Yeah. And like here, we need to get more of the music venues licensed mm -hmm. so that the music that plays in them gets recorded and everybody gets their pennies mm -hmm. uh, because not all you think it, like ksym oh, there we go ksym san antonio college radio this is urban sweet d major cheryl metal wallow the one in uh, studio yes What's sir this? so what do you what do you what do you see uh with the current landscape as far as hip-hop in in san antonio and state as well you know your opinion um, for the state, I start out with the state. The state is looking beautiful, especially with uh the Dallas movement and the Houston movement. Um, like Big X the Plug and uh, OT, the Mexican OT, uh, South Walker, like they putting on for Texas in a way that I ain't oh, seen huge. it done. Yeah. yeah, like they doing something different, and they got like they got people attention. You know what I mean? So I think. Just it, I think just as uh, us being San Antonio artists, we should just rep Texas right now. Like mm -hmm. to be honest with you, because just to not to jump on the way, but to add on to it. You know what I'm saying? But they definitely doing something major, and they got some unique. Both of them got like Mexican, all three of them Mexican OT, Sauce Walker. Oh, and Propane too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Propane hard too. Um, all them guys like they own it, like foot on the gas type deal and. And it's looking good for Texas. Um, as far as San Antonio, we got a um, we got a lot of talent. We got a lot of uh, potential, a lot of talent that's raw and untapped. Um, I just don't think 
we've seen an example from San Antonio to show us how to market. Mm. I think a lot of guys are marketable, um, got good music, um, and got a good support group that's around them. But it ain't enough to push them out of here, I don't think. But who knows? Like it, it, it could be. I think I might have said it wrong. It could be something with more consistency. You know what I mean? And then, Definitely. And then the clicking and linking, like the bringing everything together instead of uh, this is us, this y'all, this them, that's them. We gonna make it, y'all not. I think it just needs to be some unity brought together with San Antonio. I would name some artists, but I don't want to miss nobody. Right. To be honest with you, because I could think of like 10, 10 people off the top of my head that I'm like, I'm. Pr it make me proud of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. I, I used to Absolutely. not be proud of San Antonio artists. I mean, the rap scene, to be honest with you, but. I'm proud of it now because, like, um, it's they a lot busted, of people. They busted butt. They yeah. busted butt. They did a lot of work. They got yeah. their business together. For sure. Which is hugely important. For sure. And for now sure. we, you know, we've got you back on the scene. For sure. For yes. sure. For sure. Yeah. But I just think it's the energy in San Antonio that we need to shift. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And just not, because uh, the thing about it is, like, it's, it's enough room for everybody. Shout out to Trill. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Trill. Um, did you introduce him into uh, the rap game? Or you just kind of man, <laughs> no, oh, man. No. Um, he he been uh freestyling since he was like three. No lie, he used, to, he used to have a. I ain't gonna embarrass him, but yeah, he used to uh he used to be doing the Houston thing to coming down rapping when he was like three. Uh -huh. nice. And I thought that was funny. I was like, wow. But yeah, he been rapping for a minute. Yeah. When 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 did he kind of get you know find his own lane and everything you know? He's still searching, I think. Um, he's so used to freestyling that mm -hmm. he didn't know what a bar was. So I've kind of shown him what bars is, and, um, how to structure a song. Okay. But yeah, he um, I just it's with you know the music don't happen overnight, so you gotta have some patience and some 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 stay down with it. Like you gotta get in a and learn. It's frustrating when you don't know how to get in there, maneuver, and count the bars, and do all that. But mm -hmm. after that, it get fun, especially when you learn how to record yourself. Yeah. So yeah. That's one of like anything else in life is a process. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. I'm sure you'll get it. Yeah. Um, thank you for allowing us to uh, host the uh, birthday party for. For sure, for sure, man. Thank y'all for allowing us to come out there. <laughs> that was fun. For sure. That was fun. For sure. a nice crowd too. For sure. That yeah. was fun. I loved it. The end of the night. The last song was perfect. <laughs> Everybody walked out jamming. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Oh, and shout out to, uh, I forget his name. Damn, man, I don't charge it to my brain. Uh, I mean, I don't charge it to my heart, my memory. Uh, don't tell me. The guy that came and performed with us. Uh, socialize? Oh, socialize. Socialize. Yeah. socialize. See, yeah. I had a brain part there, too. Shout, shout out, out to Socialize, socialize. too, man, for showing up in a... Uh, he just he didn't know what to expect. He was kind of just through the room, like you know what I mean. So that was that was brave and that was a lot. Uh, appreciate that, man. And the songs was good, man. Yeah, I yeah. knew that he and Trell's music would match up well. Sure. They're about the same age for and sure. everything. For sure, for sure, for sure, man, man. Um, how did it feel for him to get the reception he did on stage? He was elated. He was he was happy. Um, I think like. He had some type of uh, dream in his head. I mean, well, he had some type of vision in his head where he wanted to perform with me for some reason. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I think that just made him feel. It made his. It made his year. Like, I think that's probably his best birthday. Oh, good. You know I mean? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Huh. Hopefully, this is kind of uh, open his eyes up and uh, see that the possibilities. Yeah. Of uh, what he can do. Yeah, yeah. I've been. Mean, I tried to touch on that with him and, and show him that. Um, you just work a little harder and it's gonna get bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. But uh you know how it is being young. Like <laughs> yeah. But but like you said before, consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and stick with it stick with it this is yes. uh, will, will will definitely go a long way. For sure. Yeah. That's the only thing that separates a person that make it in uh consistency and uh consistency. It's <laughs> really nothing else put with it, consistency and not quit. Man. It, it, like he was telling me he trying to switch his trajectory or like oh, his, uh his music what he's what the the content of the music he's putting out so he's trying to i think he making a i think the mixtape is called uh music for the soul okay you know what i mean so it's gonna be a lot of uh reality rap he's trying to do nice okay, okay. Yeah.
good. Like, like I said, consistency. He has an idea, uh, figure out the best way to approach it, and uh, he's got For backing. Sure. For sure. Already. So, um, yeah, as long as he stays with it and, and is focused, you know, the sky's the limit for him. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Same for you. Yeah. And sometimes you got to give yourself some leverage and a little time. You know, every, everything can't just come back <laughs> like that. You know. Yeah, that instant gratification craze. Yeah. Patience yeah. is a virtue for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Hey, y'all, stay tuned. More coming up in this uh, bit of music. We have a track from Slim Biggie and Mac, but right now, a track from Trail. This is Loving You. Mm. Keep it locked, y'all. More coming up. This is the Urban Suite, KSYM, San Antonio College Radio. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Shouts out to CTV Radio hey, hey. in the live artists, artists, artists. Follow CTV Radio. Submit your music to CTV Radio. Yes. Allow this gentleman to support your music. Yes, indeed. D Major, say hello to Sean Mecca. Oh, God. Legend what is in the up? house. And say hello to Mozzie's World is in as well. What's good, and J5's in. Hey, as what's well. good, so J5? We got, what's so good, Mozzie? We got the murder team. We got <laughs> Sean Mecca. <laughs> we got Mozzie's World. What? Glad everybody's doing all right on this money. Uh, Pre Easter celebration, I guess you want to call it that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time it was in March, wasn't it? You can have the peeps. I just want the peeps. Give me the fucking peeps. peeps. Give me the candy corn during uh, Halloween. You got to. Keep all that. I'll take the chocolate. Every color peeps. Every color of of candy corn. I don't care what color it is. Oh my God. And get you in with some some good San Antonio music up in there to to listen to and share. For sure. Hear this music we spin? Yeah. We got it. Like. And this the uh, what's it got sound right? Yeah. What sound was this? <laughs> this that song from Middle Society sample. He <laughs> riding that thing now. Tiny tune. Mm. How are you? Like, man, I miss you. I miss you. We haven't seen you in a minute. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's been busy. We've been busy. But it's time. we got to hook up somewhere because I need I need some 2-5 hugs. I need some 2-5 hugs. I need to make sure you're okay. We haven't even touched base and talked. And, 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 or no, not DJ Catch 22. He's going to be next month. Austin the DJ. Let them get immersed into hip hop at a young age on a whole different level. Meet meet the producers, listen to the producers, network. For sure. Have some amazing chicken and waffles there. They do a chicken and waffle special just for us. Okay. And they're good. They also have their regular wonderful West African cuisine. Okay. Which their food is great. Okay. Um, but definitely come on out for brunch and beef. There's no cover. It's all ages. You just come out, have a good time. D Major is going to interview Jay Nautic and uh, awesome Austin the DJ, DJ and it's going to be fantastic. Austin the DJ is actually going to do some spinning for us as well. Okay. He's on YouTube. I highly suggest everybody goes and look Austin, Austin the DJ. DJ on YouTube. His mixes are fucking fire. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, 90.1 FM Radio. <laughs>